Hey everyone. Cool. I'm live now, right? Hey, uh, really excited to start with this reason bootcamp. Um, I will be monitor uh, monitoring the chat, so but like I won't be constantly on the chat. So if you have some questions, just throw them in. And uh, thanks for TylerMaginis.com to letting me do this uh, free bootcamp uh, for this bootcamp for you. Um, let's start. Cool. So like we on the uh, first day, but a little bit about myself. My name is Vladimir Novik. I'm a Google developer expert and independent consultant in uh, web, mobile, VR, AR and IoT fields. On the left side, you can uh, see my Twitter handle. On the right side is my uh, website. So feel free to reach out, ask questions, and uh, yeah. Um, so let's talk about reason why are we here? What will we be talking about like in these four days? Um, and uh, essentially about the format of uh, of this bootcamp. Um, because it's it's a boot camp, it will involve some homework, some exercises. So we will um, talk about them in a bit. Um, about reason, reason lets you write uh, simple, uh, fast, and quality type safe code while leveraging both the JavaScript and OCaml ecosystems. That's what you see when you go to ReasonML website. But what does it actually mean? And um, JavaScript, okay, you're probably aware of JavaScript, but why OCaml? Like, what is it, OCaml, and why should we bother learning new syntax and using it? Uh, so, yeah, why, why is OCaml? So, OCaml is a um, general purpose programming language that is out there since 1996. Um, and uh, Facebook is using it in several projects and used it uh, even before, like, ReasonML. Uh, uh, was invented and um, flow for example if familiar with flow flow is written in OCaml and a um, bunch of other projects inside Facebook are written in OCaml um, it's a, func a functional programming language with the Hindley Milner type system uh, this type system basically means that it's a uh, uh, it's a classical type system that uses um, um, it has pa parametric polymorphism Basically, what it means, it means that uh, type system is uh, um, is safe, but still it, it maintains ability to um, uh, like you can write that data generically while still maintaining types, and this gives you an ability to have like really a superior type inference, which we'll see in in, in a bit, and something like. Uh, I haven't seen something like that before I uh, tried ReasonML and it's like super cool to use it. Um, it can be compiled to bytecode, to native code, or to JavaScript, which is super cool. You can write uh, applications both for web, uh, for, for even like imagine uh, something like that. You write application in ReasonML, it compiles to EXE, to Linux distribution, to WebGL on web and um, to Android, iOS, everything is with the same code base. And basically, like it's compiled to bytecode, so you can do basically anything with it. Uh, so it's like super cool. Uh, Reason syntax is uh, not far from JS. It has uh, various uh, uh, things specific to Reason. Uh, we will walk through them. Um, but like in, gen in general, syntax is uh, very familiar to JS. Uh, performance and compilation time is blazing fast. And when I'm talking about blazing fast, um, it's like um, if we compare, for example, with TypeScript, which is not a real compilation, but still, if you compare to like time times with TypeScript, it's like 10 times faster. And it's like really uh, super fast. And we'll see why it's fast, like why, um, why things are compiled fast and why... Um, Data structures are much more efficient in uh, in ReasonML in um, OCaml basically. Um, so like OCaml is a language uh, for writing React. Um, like first React prototypes were in, in SML, which is also like a functional uh, 
language, uh, close cousin of a camel. Um, it still has side effects and other scap hatches because we sometimes we we want to use um, like interop or JavaScript or interop or camel and um, stuff like that. Uh, camel has amazing community. It has this um, slogan basically: if it compiles, it works, and it's like one hundred percent correct because like if types are inferred and compiled and like every, everything is supposed to work. Um, it has amazing tooling in the language itself. And when I say about tooling, um, do you know what this is? It's like the modern JavaScript world, right? So we have flow, or TypeScript, and Immutable, and um, uh, linters, uh, and Bubble, and whatever. Like we have so much tooling um, in addition to the language itself. Well, in Reason, everything is inside Reason, so you don't need to worry about these types of tooling. And we'll see in a bit how uh, how it's done and how it's used. Um, so uh, let's get into the, this. Is like the <laughs> everything for the uh, all for the slides. We'll get into some code. You're supposed to get this link in the email. If you did get the link, uh, just like. Copy, uh, copy this link. I will uh, stick here for several uh, seconds, for, uh, giving you an option to like copy that. Um, yeah, let's go to the getting started, and our first steps will be basically the installation, and um, we will install Reason CLI because we will be using a tool called AirTop. I'll show in a bit how it's uh, uh, how it looks like, but basically it's like a, a REPL for uh, for reason. Uh, we will use Buckle Script. It's um, uh, basically a compiler that compiles reason to JavaScript. And actually, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I had some. I'll probably I forgot to put here. Uh, but anyways, like uh, explanation how it's uh, it's compiled but anyway we'll look at uh, like in the, in the code itself so um you have docs link here uh, yeah let's get back to it so we uh, we basically add our bs platform as a global so we have this concept called buckle script to compile reason to javascript basically we, uh, to compile when you compile reason code you have either a camel code or reason code and both of them, it's RE file or ML files for Camel. They are compiled to Camel uh, AST, and a Camel AST can be compiled to either bytecode or native code or JavaScript. When it compiles to JavaScript, it uses Buckle Script, and uh, we will walk uh, through the Buckle Script options uh, on uh, uh, third and fourth day, I believe. Um, we will get into Buckle Script a little bit earlier. We'll even see it today, but uh, like in going in depth for like configuration project and uh, configurating project and stuff like that, we will we'll talk on third and fourth day. Uh, then you init your project with BSV init, new project, and your theme will be basic reason. And um, or you can add it to existing project. You can add to BS platform, for example, if you use. Uh, Webpack, you can really e easily uh, add this uh, platform and then use Buckle Script to compile your reason files to JavaScript and then consume them from Webpack. Again, we will talk about that on the a, a third day. Today, we'll focus more on the language itself and uh, like uh, 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 like core syntax of the language and all the benefits it brings and stuff like that. Uh, then you can run buckle script in watch mode and do other stuff but let, let's let's do it actually so like we um i already done installation of reason cli because obviously like i'm working with the reason uh for quite a while um i add um yeah thanks for thanks for posting the link in the chat it uh, really helps uh um yeah so like um okay so i have the bs platform already so let me just like init my project and uh let me know if the font is too small if it's too small i will just uh 
make it a little bit larger if this works I will just keep it like that so I will need my new project uh, let's call it day one basic reason it you see that's it that's like super fast so I have day one and if I check what inside let me open my editor so I have VS code here and I have uh, also like and the editor integration that we will walk through it but like in a nutshell what you get here you get package JSON you get source node models and basically the basic structure uh, uh, of uh, yeah you on 20 uh, I will enlarge the code a bit that's better yeah okay so we have demo re and uh, we have js log here with hello buckle script and reason ML. and we have syntax highlighting we have like lots of things here that we will uh, we have uh, as editor integration but in general you see when i open it it automatically created this file so this is because like this uh, editor extension uses buckle script to run it uh, and generate this file so if you look at this file it's super clean it's not like uh, uh, it, it's not like having like all those like uh, it, it almost human uh, written code and uh, yeah it's, uh, it's super cool so in order to configure buckle script and again we will see it uh, later on have even suggestions here what to to add but in general this is my bs config that will be generated for me uh, we will go through options on the third day um, font size like like you you want a bigger font size sure i can do that that works uh, let me know if it works um, okay cool so there, that's the the BS config and we have our uh, demo RE here so um, what we are gonna do right now before like jumping into our top and, and stuff like that we will see how it works in the console so basically what I will do here I will uh, just create a new file, uh, like index.html file, and I will have a uh, wrong one, sorry. This HTML snippet, I don't have style sheet here, and uh, instead of main jest, will be source demo bs js and uh yeah let's uh run it live i keep forgetting where is it uh, ah, i think it's here yeah open with live server let's open it and uh, we'll see nothing obviously but you see we see a uh, hello buckle script and reason and yeah obviously that's the the console log that uh that, that we've seen um yeah and uh, that that's how how it looks like uh wait where's my vs code um uh, no it's a different one sorry and yeah if we already jumped here so that's uh like the thing that we'll go through so you see like the functionality pretty much it looks like javascript it's a little bit different but it looks pretty much the same but we will go through syntax later on uh, let me just close this one and uh, I think I lost my my ex yeah okay cool it's here uh, so yeah, let's go th uh, into editor integration. Uh, 
and to see like why it's uh, why it's cool. Um, I th I I think yeah okay cool it's here. So um, another thing yeah we can run buckle script in watch mode, uh, and you can do it like that. You can run like this, and let me let me actually switch to VS Code and go to uh, terminal and run it here. So let's say I do mistake. I already see it here in the in the editor, which is uh, cool. But like if I uh, save my editor, um, I have like cryptic errors because of syntax errors. But sometimes, but most of the time, I have like. Uh, Proper errors. We'll see it in a, in more advanced stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, let's get back to editor integration. Cool. We're here. And um, another option to try out reason is going to the playground. And uh, you go to reason L GitHub EM try then you get a playground and in this playground you have like amazing th things you have the reason code you have the um generated code with buckle script you also have a camel code and you see a camel is a little bit different and that's why a reason was invented to more to bridge the gap between um for javascript developers to get into um a development with a camel and also like to get this interop of the javascript because like you can um, have external packages um, in uh, like npm packages and use them in uh, in reason. Uh, yeah, so you can play around with that, and uh, let's get into editor integration. We have R top. We'll uh, most of our examples we'll do in R top or in a playground. For, for today, tomorrow it's more tomorrow and the day after it will be more on a project basis and stuff like that. Um, then we also have editor integration. So we have this uh, reason VS code extension. If you go to the docs here in reason ML docs, uh, you will have editor plugins and I use VS code, but like lots of people use other stuff so you have like bunch of uh, other uh, plugins for for other um, editors except Emacs which is unmaintained but like you have for Veeam and uh, any Veeam fans in the crowd yeah um, okay so let's check what we have in VS Code and uh, like what we uh, what are the settings so I go to install extension I go to uh, reason uh, we have this extension okay I'm on reason ID and this extension is uh, the best one to use for uh, native compilation because it includes more like camel stuff and we have reason vs code which is like the advised one uh, and let me stop this one and show you really, really quick. Yes, font is kind of too large. Yeah, so it's uh, like you have a bunch of settings here. Um, like you format width, fair value code length, stuff like that. But let me show you how it actually looks like. So, um, yeah, friends don't let you <laughs> friends use Vim, nice. <laughs> uh, but you still need to know Vim. I agree with both. <laughs> I um, use Vim, but like I prefer VS Code. And uh, yeah, um, so like we have various things here and let me open, um, uh, let me type something here. So I have a cool something. Um, 
so I can already see that it's a string, but I haven't typed anything, right? So like, how does it know? So it has this type inference, which is super great, and it infers already all the types. So let's say, uh, and I know that my A is a string, right? So for example, I want to create a function. So it will look simpler, uh, like, like JavaScript, basically. Uh, let's say it will be a plus b and we'll have uh, a plus b. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, something is odd here. A, ah, because it's a. c plus b. C plus B. Uh, it's weird. Something odd here with the. Let me just restart uh, this. Close this second. And go to like one project I prepared for you. And open it up. Yeah, um, it will take some time to load. And then, yeah, okay, cool. So I have like different uh, inference here. If uh, like A, if true, and I have like, this is a string and stuff like that. So it's like, uh, a second. Just a second. And yeah, let's do like let b. Let's create a function like c, c, for example. And uh, that's what I actually tried to show. And uh, I know that b is a function. No, I don't try the args that way. I do like, I had a typo, that's why it, comp it didn't compile. I do it like this, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I write it like that. And um, so I know that my B is int, or, uh, int and int, and it returns an int. Yeah, Trevor, it was a weird mistake. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, can happen to anyone. Uh, anyways, like uh, A, B and A plus B. So if I, for example, do something like that, it just won't compile. Because it knows, like, it will tell me this expression has type string, but an expression was expected of type int. And uh, yeah, it's it's like super cool. It already knows my, uh, know my types. And we'll talk about variants. Uh, today but like let's say I have type person and uh, we'll talk about types too and my person it has like name which is a string and it has an age which is an int and basically now if I say uh, uh, who am I uh, equal uh, name Vladimir and age 34 like I haven't said that it's a, it's a type person but it knows that I'm of type person and it's super cool it knows like it does the all type inference uh, yeah the question does recursion reason may also need the rec keyword yes it does we we will uh, uh, talk about recursions and in general, like uh, in terms of um, agenda, uh, today we will talk about more about data structures and tomorrow we'll talk about functions and uh, functional programming tips and tricks and recursion specifically, because like recursion is the 
uh, the tool you will use all the time because you're in functional uh, realm so like recursion is like the 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 preferred way to work with uh, functional languages, I guess. Uh, yeah, so I have this type of uh, inference. And you see, like, I have a uh, code lens enabled, uh, meaning, like, I have here well, which dependencies, and I can... And let's say, uh, like, we talked about various tooling, right? So let's say I wrote it, like, in a really weird way. So I can click option. It's, like, a trick, uh, but, like, uh, it's not written in, in the documentation, I think. But if you... Uh, um, hit Alt Shift F, it will format my file automatically to be on a proper format. And it's already included in Reason. It's like a, a tooling already there. You don't need to like invent anything. Um, in addition to that, if I go to my settings, and I prefer them in this format, if I go to my user setting, I have here Reason language server. Uh, so everything prefixed to the Reason language server is for this extension, and uh, it has like pair value code lands and various stuff. But also I have uh, format on save. So if I'll change that to true, I keep it on false because I not only use on on. Um, like I, I write uh, also JavaScript uh, projects and I prefer the JavaScript projects to be format on save to false. Um, but like, again, I have like the same idea and now I'm uh, hitting command S and it formats on save. And so like if I like delete one and it prefers to be that way. So like I uh, have constantly like formatted code looking just as it's supposed to be. And uh, you probably notice this little thing. So yes, you can ex uh, assign if expressions to LED bindings. But uh, yeah, let's talk now about like um, our top. And uh, let's start actually getting into core uh, parts of the of the language. Uh, so our top um, is a tool. When you install Reason CL, uh, CLI, you get this tool. And if you click our top, it will get into uh, this kind of repo. It will also give you auto completion, and you will be able to evaluate your Reason code inside the uh, inside the this repo uh, one thing though it you cannot um, it's only reason without buckle script meaning like and that's why I prefer for today to use that uh, our top because I want to get into core syntax of the reason itself without like because buckle script it has its own data types and, and structures and additional stuff that is really helpful for development in JavaScript. Uh, whatever you write in our top, it's the same uh, for the like native development, and uh, that's that's why I kind of prefer to to use it for today. And uh, yeah, let's start. Uh, start. So we'll, um, we talked about types of being like um, one hundred percent unfilled, and that coverage is always one hundred percent. Uh, it's super cool. It means like if it compiles, it uh, there are no bugs, and actually uh, there are no null bugs because you don't have null in uh, reason at all. Like you have um, like nullable thing in uh, yeah uh, YouTube. Uh, I fell in love with YouTube from a camel. Yeah, it's like the same the uh, the same thing uh, as YouTube in a camel. And uh, actually, it looks pretty much familiar because, like, this is Utop, this is for Camel. And yeah, I'm not sure how to quit that. <laughs> uh, ah, yeah, no. Uh, anyway, let's just stop on your shell. It's kind of embarrassing, but <laughs> it happens. Ah, okay, cool. 
just didn't get my uh, cable didn't get my input for some uh, some reason so yes uh, let's get back to auto so in auto basically you can type things and you can you have auto completion as you can see here and um, what's uh, what's cool about that that I can uh, evaluate my expressions immediately and I can uh, yeah thanks exit zero in uh, in our top is quite uh, it's like that that's to exit our top um, so uh, here I can write for example my a equal to when I um, have a semicolon it basically tells me it tells our top to execute the statement and I get the execution so in execution I see what will be the infer type of the uh, binding and uh, like what the value and like everything so we will use it today uh, but let's start with uh, like basic stuff before going into let and stuff like that like let's start with like basic arithmetic operations and like ba basic uh, values uh, so uh, yeah and let me just like a little bit explain about like the the format of the like, of the of the bootcamp so i will be uh, uh, talking live coding and showing you things um, in um, email that you got and uh, there is like slides for the uh, for this day and then you will have exercises so bunch of exercises that you need to complete uh, till tomorrow and like it's an optional but it's like preferred way you want to boot camp so that's uh, uh, that's like the, the preferred way to uh, to work with it and uh, like the idea is you write these uh, like solutions for that. We'll get uh, through the exercise, but the idea is to write solutions and then like tweet uh, at me on, on Twitter to like, hey, here's the solution. And uh, tomorrow we will walk through all exercises. So don't uh, like if you if you see a big list of exercises, because it's a big list of exercises, don't feel pressure of like uh, uh, we will get through all of these uh, tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, let, let's get back to um, uh, like arithmetic operations and stuff like that. So uh, 2 plus 2 equals 4. It's inferred as uh, as an int, right? So like we have basic integers and we have uh, also all snippets that like not snippets, like all uh, like everything that I typed, most of it uh, will be a little bit different. But you will have this uh, later on, uh, like uh, for for homework. So you will have reference for everything that I did uh, today. Uh, so yeah, we have uh, two plus two. If we do two plus zero, it won't compile because we have two is an int, two point zero is a float, two point zero uh, is a float. So if I want to. Uh, do 2 plus 2 in floats I will do like that and still it won't compile because for float operations there is specific syntax so you do plus for int plus dot for floats and you will get float 4 point 4 point is similar to be like 4.0 uh, to evaluate you get the same it's float 4 point uh, uh, 4 point um strings you will have hello and i want to concatenate to strings i want to concatenate world so hello world will be like that uh, can use it like this what if i have something like that uh, no sorry like like that it's syntax error because i need to escape those uh yeah different one uh still syntax no it's not a complex but i wonder why it's not escaping yeah this is the escape this is the escape for that yeah what was wrong with Ah, okay, cool. Yeah, because I escaped a uh, blank space. Uh, no, it's not that complex syntax. You will see. It will give you benefits. And actually, like, if you talk about um, um, 
string concatenation and right now we're in reason uh, realm without involving uh, buckle script but basically when you involve buckle script you have a similar uh, to um, like uh, backticks in JavaScript where you have similar with buckle script uh, so you can like put inside variables and stuff like that but we'll see uh, we will look at this a little bit later so um, let's say I want to say hello uh, world world and I want to add plus one it won't compile because I have type int so I do a string of it and I have hello world one so um, as you can see you have string of bool, string of float, string of format, string of int. So have different uh, uh, conversion functions from string to int. And basically the pattern is type of type. So I can have like bool of string. I have int of char, int of float, int of string, and it, the list goes on. So if you need to convert things, you do it in that way. The reason why we uh, have all these overhead because like we want our co when our code compile it works, it's like super type safe, um, and um, yeah. Um, so you you have this a little bit overhead of doing that, but you will see uh, lots of things that you have. Uh, you need to write more uh, code in JavaScript. You need to write less code in in Reason. So it kind of. And you, you don't need to type things, right? So you don't need to put like uh, this a is an int and, and or like a person and stuff like that because like you have type inference. So at some uh, things you still need to do conversions, but like it's super easy. And uh, yeah, let's say we have, uh, we also have like multi-line string. So hey there, hello world. Uh, and I get hey there hello world you're probably familiar with that it's like the next line um, so like in general I won't pass it here because it uh, like won't uh, put it here because it won't work but like in general if we uh, let's actually do that in our VS code uh, I already have that actually. This is how you do this with like a buckle script string concatenation. You have this syntax, uh, have those, and then you pass uh, both dollar uh, at the beginning, you pass a variable, uh, lead binding, I will call it a variable, and uh, it will just compiles to greetings Vladimir. Um, Let's get back here. Uh, we can have let a equal a, and it's a char. So we can get uh, string get, I believe, a one, something like that. Uh, string uh, get. Yeah, because like you see, it even doesn't give me an ability to like make mistakes. I want to get a uh, like the first character of a string, but it's not a string; it's a uh, it's a char. So let's say a equal hello, and I want to do a string get uh, a two will be L because it starts from index 0, 0, 1, 2, so get me L. And you you will see a bunch of those like string and int 32 and stuff like that. The thing is, um, reason comes with OCaml standard library embedded in such reason and several things already open so you can uh, use a bunch of, uh, of stuff. Uh, and actually, like if you go to official docs, uh, somewhere here if you go to official docs and you have API here uh, so you have for example you have array and array it's from the standard library you have a bunch of manipulations on arrays and on lists and like whatnot like lots of things 
and for example so i talked about int32 so it's like what you can do on int32 uh, um, like on integers right and um, you have strings uh, and you have pervasives this is like very important and pervasive is something that is already opened and you can use without like any prefixing you'll understand more when we talk about models and opening models but like in general like all those uh, like comparisons uh, of sorts all of them are uh, kind of uh, uh, like they are defined in pervasives and you can define your own custom uh, comparisons and stuff like that uh, yeah so like we talked about multi-line strings and uh, let's print our uh, what we'll print we'll, we'll print our string string a so now I see something different I have this type of unit which is like an empty thing right but like the thing is like unit is like a special type which uh, is like it's not a null it's like uh, um, I wouldn't call it also a nothing it's like uh, when you do a side effect for example as this one without any return value you, you still have the return value of unit and um, yeah basically can reason to multi-dimensional array to uh, for a table like structure like 16 uh, on 16 yeah yeah you can do like lots of things uh you can do multi-dimensional you can uh do like we will see in, with the tuples you, we will actually create today binary tree uh, um data structure pretty easily and uh reason is about like doing really cool data structures and having really cool algorithms implemented really simple in a really simple way uh, um, the next one I want to talk about like double equal or triple equal so let's say we have a list it's a list we will talk about list today too if I say my uh, list is equal to this one I will get true but if it's go like that I will get false and the one is for structural equality, equality, the other one is for referential equality. So most of the time you will use structural equality. It means basically this structure is equal to this structure. And you can pass whatever like you like. I will, this is false, for example, right? And when you have like, um, at some point you can use referential equality and you will use but um, but most of the time you will use like structural equality um, let's talk about um, various uh, thing uh, like arithmetic operations one plus uh, plus six multiplied by seven minus five uh, by seven minus five. 38 so basically what it means it knows that like it's usual priority rules such as this one so it's like the same and uh, uh, this one will have does older matter if you mean if I do one two three uh, it will be false by definition because it's uh, not the same reference but like if you meant this one as a structural quality it will be false because of the implementation of uh, lists and we will see um, close to the end of this uh, stream we will see how lists are implemented even though they look like this in memory they are more uh, close to linked lists um, and yeah order does matter um, so we talked about like uh let's say if you have 10 uh, um, divided by 3 multiplied by 3 and you will get uh basically like uh 10 divided by 3 it's 3 uh, multiplied by 3 it's it's 9 so this is will be like to the left side uh 
and um, yeah, so it, it will always like fold to the left side. Uh, if we, for example, have 42 plus 70 plus 73 mod 5, uh, something like that. So it will do this first and then this and then this because mod is like more uh, important than, than multiplication. Um, let's do like one more, couple of more actually. Um, one is less than two and two not equal to three. Uh, so what that will be, that will be true because like one less than two and two not equal to three and that's fine uh, but if you do like true equal one you will have like different type which well, it, it's uh, kind of obvious all these things but you will have during exercise you will have different expressions that you need to like write a result then evaluate an R top and then write a result and then like submit so it like to see like uh are you close to like what is an R top or not and uh also for example if i have this one it will basically fail because this one it will be boolean and boolean less than seven is uh, uh, type uh, type error. Um, we can do something like this. Uh, actually, it will fail. This will fail. Uh, no, uh, sorry, this won't fail. Yeah, we can do like one, uh, E3 for uh, like if we want uh, exponent, uh, exponent and stuff like that. So like 1.5, uh, multiply float, 1 e3. Um, we can do something like that. Uh, and this will fail because we need dot in the end. So this is for floats and let's do like a couple of more string uh, and this will be pretty much obvious after we go through the types. Also type error, you know, like different types. And 34, for example, plus. And let's see something, actually. So we talked about editor, right? It won't let me write this. Because like in top it looks like uh, it will fail after compilation. In editor, it like shows me errors all the time if I'm wrong with something so like it shows error here and and now it will be syntax error and you see how elegant it is um, then let's do something like that we can actually do something like, that, uh, like this we can define um, we will talk about functions tomorrow, but we will um, we will look at the like at the basics uh, at the basics today. So like uh, creating uh, creating. Oh wait, wait a second. Yeah, I wanted to cover the functions. Yeah, so um, creating function as I showed you previously is like. Like create a. Uh, this is like the function. That it's int and it's a function. Uh, you will see why is this because like, in a nutshell, every function that you create is automatically queried in the language itself. Meaning, I can do something like this. Uh, ah, sorry, don't have. And I will get. And this is like done automatically. You don't need any curing specifically, specific curing or stuff like that. Um, yeah, but uh, I also can reassign my function to like be, uh, for example, int of string. 
and uh, what did I do wrong? Int of string. Int. Let's stop. Try with this one. Yeah, well, maybe not in alt top. Not sure about that. Um, yeah. Um, let's do something like that. Let's. Um, ah, also we can um, do a manipulation on strings. So, for example, I have this type of string. Yeah. Oh, so uh, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, let a, <laughs> the, the, these tiny typos are like, it's really cool I have chat enabled because <laughs> these tiny ty uh, typos are uh, sometimes happen what I can do. Um, yeah, so like I wanted to uh, show you uh, this type of thing. So I have ASD. something like that and this will actually work because it compares ASCII comparison between like the first letters of, of this one and this one and it's like less than that one so I can do these type of things on strings and it's also really cool um, also I showed you before I can do like uh, a equal if uh, true then hello uh, true then hello and uh, else hi and I will get hello so I, I can do this in JavaScript I can do this in uh, uh, I can do this uh, like in reason I can uh, use it like that but the, the problem is if I want to do like if true hello else two it won't work because I need to have the same type here so uh, mostly in reason you won't use uh, ifs or ternary operators because you have pattern matching and we'll talk about pattern matching today it's a really powerful feature of uh, functional languages and especially in reason you will use it everywhere like even the structuring is like some form of pattern matching so you probably won't use ifs much uh, so uh, we uh, let's talk about like binding definitions so we have seen this led for like lots of uh, examples right now and like I try <laughs> do this, this time even with this typo uh, but basically um, uh, defining a variable uh, uh, the question is, is it like Ruby where the last expression is the value? Yes, that's correct. The last expression is like, it's not a value. It's like uh, the last expression is returned. So yeah. Um, and um, it shines everywhere. Like you, you can have, we'll, we'll get to blocks and, and like more complex stuff. But yeah, last expression is like the expression that is returned. Um, so let bind is let's say we have let a equal uh, one two three um, and basically like in JavaScript I can say something like that in reason it won't let me because let uh, are immutable. There is some uh, option to uh, to make it like to make it mutable with uh, ref. Uh, I will attach uh, like uh, the snippets for uh, like the code. Uh, uh, snippets that I wrote for for today and you will have a link there to like read more about refs and we'll probably use refs on like a third day or something like that. No, uh, but what I can I can do when I want to like reassign stuff. So I want uh, I can say let a equal hello and then I want to reassign a so I can say world and my a will be world. Um, it, this is called shadowing and uh, 
basically it's it reassigns uh uh, part in memory, like take the same cell in memory and reassigns to different things. Um, if uh, if it's inside, and it's like block scoped, and we'll talk in a bit about scopes. So you can do shadowing in the same scope. You can like do shadowing for like uh, from like different scopes and stuff like that. In terms of conventions for bindings, I can say something like that. Because it treats that as a module, and we'll talk about module later on. But like you cannot do something like that. Uh, you can annotate your types. You can still say it's an int equal to. There is no reason to do that uh, for simple stuff. But let's say you have. Uh, I, I showed you type inference with different uh, with like with a person. So I had per type person. Um, equal like name string and last name something like that and uh, if you have um, different type like how it knows the type inference it knows by the field names by like record field names if you have different type which also has name string and last name so type inference may falter then, then then sometimes you want to assign specific types or when we we will use like uh, parametric constructors and stuff like that you also sometimes assign type we'll see uh, see it later on um, types also can be uh, aliased meaning i can assign my test to be int i can assign uh, my test one to be person it's as simple as that. And now my test one is unbound because it's a type, but I can say let a uh, test one. You got the idea. I won't type everything here. Uh, block scope. Uh, so we uh, we can actually uh, create an anonymous. Uh, so if you uh, have something inside. Um, curly braces it's a block and we can put blocks anywhere we can do let a equal uh, for example let b equal uh, actually greeting equal hello and uh, let world equal world and then as like uh, I mentioned previously, the last one will be returned. I can do hello world, and I need to add semicolon here. Uh, unbound value hello ah greeting. It's not hello. It's greeting. So. Uh, Let's make it look more clean, for example, here. Uh, this is a block and the last value of the block is returned. I can in the same way do something like this. I can do, let's print uh, let's put it here and then uh, put an out of to evaluate. But I, I talked about shadowing, right? So I have my a as greeting world, but I can say my A is hello, and I get immediately that it's unused, but I can bring, bring string A, and then uh, if I type it here, my a is hello but if i type a like this it's hello world because it's shadowed inside this anonymous scope so you can even like put these curly braces anywhere without any assignments without anything just like you want to define a, a block scope anywhere just like throw it in um so i had here a cool example that i probably should paste here it's like something 
Ah, okay, it's like the same one I type. Yeah, uh, anyways, this is like for LED bindings, and um, this is like the, the first thing, right? Uh, so, um, let's get into data structures. So, uh, we have these things, uh, this, uh, this thing called uh, tuples, and I can say, uh, for example, I have XY coordinates. So how do I present X Y coordinates in JavaScript, for example? I can say it's like uh, X is something, Y is something. But in reason, we have additional data structures called uh, tuples. So I can say 23, 24, this is my X, Y coordinates. <laughs> and it's funny, you see, like it's in furthest type of test, because like my int is alias uh, to like type test. Uh, yeah, let's just restart that. And now it's like int and uh, int. Um, this is a tuple and I can say like, for example, hello. 23, two point, bool. Uh, not bool, sorry, true. And I get a tuple of like four values and uh, with like uh, different parameters and stuff like that. And the cool thing about tuples, it's like really shines when you pattern match and stuff. And uh, in uh, like, sorry. Like in this data structure, basically um, you can access it by destructuring with another form of pattern matching, or you can uh, access it by um, like executing first, which is part of pervasives. Uh, I can say, actually I haven't assigned this tuple. So let's call it, uh, uh, sorry, let top equal something like that, and then I can have the first one of tuple. Uh, the first one that's where I'm expressing type string in float bool of type A and B. Uh, Yeah, I'm not sure what's wrong here. I usually not use first and second at all, but we can look it up in uh, uh, in in standard library. Actually, like take it as a homework to look like how do I take first and second? I think we can do it only for two, something like that. I'm not sure. Yeah, we can do it only when we have two. So that's like, and you can do like second for like the same. So the, the, the idea of using tuples, it's also like it's immutable, it's ordered, it's like has a fixed size at creation time. Once you created it, that's it, you cannot change it. And um, it's heterogeneous, you can use any types inside. You can actually have tuples of tuples and like whatnot. Have like, uh, can have various, uh, there are things. Uh, I think I have somewhere example of that. Uh, yeah, well, when we'll get into variants, we will have also like tuple example, like more complex examples and stuff like that. Um, and like speaking of like extracting the values, let's get back a little bit to let, let for example. So if I have let a uh, equal uh, 23, 24. So A is, uh, let's say, something like that. So obviously I cannot access this one with the first and second, we've just seen that, but how do I get the values? So that's where I can destructure things. And I can do that with records, with, with um, uh, tuples, with lists, right? like whatnot. So I can say, 
uh, the idea of pattern matching, we will get more in depth uh, in, into that, but the idea is uh, like you probably used in JavaScript if you have let a b equal uh, uh, data, it will extract a b from data, right? So the same idea, I have my a, I, uh, I have a tuple here and I have a b c equal a and then it will assign a as int b as 24 c as string sometimes i don't want every one of those i want only c for example so i can put this special character and say i am interesting interested only in yeah oh sorry that's because of the reassignment so it does let me even do like this uh, world stuff so let Put some more names here top one equal 23 24 uh, 45 whatever uh, hello and then I get only C because I'm not interested in the first one in the second but I need to know like the order of those so like for complex data structures we will use a combination of records and variants and and tuples but it's it's really good to know like uh, a, re a really good example is a is x y coordinates because oh for example i have i want to create a vector three which is like a vector in three-dimensional space and you actually will have this um, exercise uh, for homework so vector three is basically a tuple of three values of x y and z so i have like three two four and this is a vector three or maybe i want it to be more precise so i'll do it with floats um so th that's like really cool that structure to use um uh, let's say um want to do greetings okay again with the greetings uh greetings we'll create greetings tuple and we'll create a block uh, we will have inside uh, a equal not a uh, equal hello then we will have let b equal world and uh, then i want to return a tuple of let's say I want to reverse them I want to get them like that B and A close I get world 20 uh, greeting tuple world and uh, ah sorry I returned A it's supposed to be like this one world hello so they are reversed that's great but now what i want to do i want to uh, extract them and like um, combine them right so i can do let uh, first second equal greeting tuple. so what i will get i will get that first will be world the second will be hello and then I can do first uh, plus second world hello. So I reverse them. So I can do various stuff, and it's actually a hint to one of the solutions for the for the exercise for one of the exercises. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's the destructuring. And that's uh, basically how you use tuples, uh, destructuring and uh, destruction with tuples. Now let's get into records. So um, just um, to be clear, um, do I have any questions up till now regarding like um, everything we passed? Because now we will get more into like deeper stuff. I'll just wait a couple of minutes for the 
for the chat if you have questions. If not, we'll continue to records. Uh, the time, cool. Okay. Cool, let's continue. If you don't have questions, I will continue to to records. Um, cool, let's go. So like we have a type person, we've already seen that. So our type person will have age of int, uh, age of int, and it will have name as a string. Let's actually, uh, yeah, the question is coming from JS, not familiar with tuples, are they more comparable to an object or an array in JS? No, they are like, they different. It's a different data structure. It's not existent in JS at all. And uh, it's a really great data structure to use uh, for various uh, various things. Um, so like at first it, it seems like, why do I need additional data structure? You probably will ask the same for the variant. Well, maybe not for the variants, but um, you can think if you want to group some values and if you want to group them in like a small like groups, instead of just having this overhead of uh, like having uh, different keys and stuff like that, and still getting type safety, and then when you use tuples. We will use records right now. So records are kind of remind, the syntax reminds JavaScript, but with record, you need to type things. And with tuples, you don't. With tuples, it gives you an ability to like infer type from, from the order, from like every place in the in the tuple. Hope it might make sense. Let's get into records. It will probably make more sense uh, when we understand like what, what, what's the difference. So, uh, let's uh, reopen our top and um, let's do our type person. So our type person has age int name string. This is a type person. So uh, now I can, when I have this type, I can create it. I can have let person equal uh, age 34, uh, name Vladimir Novik. Uh, and now I have this person. So um, the thing is, when I want to, uh, let's say I want to create a different different tracker at all like it's it looks like javascript object it's it's not a javascript object um so let's look at uh like if i want to create object with uh, first key something so it was uh, supposed to be uh to work in javascript it won't work here it will fail to compile because unbound record field first key because reason uses um, record keys for inferring types it searches for the, the the type that has this signature and it doesn't have this signature so it fails so the the problem with the records that you need to type them uh, it can uh, you, you can uh, think about that like maybe it's an overhead or something like that and what if I have dynamic data structure and stuff like that the, the, and most of the time you have fixed data structure and even if you have something dynamic you um, if you interrupt for an instance with the JavaScript you have um, an ability to uh, have these like abstract types uh, um, and uh, like with buckle script and basically create like JavaScript objects we, when that structure is not known. Um, but the, the cool thing with the reason is like, uh, when you get this record from somewhere, it already knows it's a person. So you have like everything completion. And even if I want to get to age, I can type person 
age and you see I have the auto completion and obviously it's the same thing in editor uh, so let's just uh, let me show you this uh, I want to get like person age and name and I have this like need completion and not not only that I have the completion and what type is it and even dogs I can have dogs for that so it's like super cool um, and yeah it, like after this bootcamp when you will get more in depth with the reason and stuff like that if you want to know like these completions for more advanced stuff uh, type of stuff I uh, stream reasonable content on Twitch and I streamed uh, I think three weeks ago like uh, content on GraphQL and Reason and actually you can have this type of completion inside GraphQL queries on the client which is like super cool and it's possible only in Reason because of the like the uh, all the ecosystem and stuff like that um, so um, what I can do with this record so I want to change my field and the records are immutable but I want to change my field so I can say let my person and it's what we call the shadowing right I will say have my person age is person age plus one and I will have a birthday in uh, less than a month so that will that function will run for me uh, not the function, sorry, that's uh, lead binding is like uh, for me. Um, so you can do this as like, you're coming from JavaScript world, it's like a spread operator and um, super straightforward. With the records, you get like all the type completions with that, all type inference and stuff like that. And that's the only, uh, that's one of the options to change your record. Other option is to say, let's uh let's talk about more cool examples beyond like hello world stuff right so let's say we we are elon musk and we want to launch a rocket so we create a type rocket and we have some kind of rocket type is a string and we want our destination to be actually mutable so we can prefix our key with mutable destination string and our fuel type will be also string and let's call it okay cool we create the type we have this type now let's actually launch rocket to mars that's how it starts writing reason to launch rockets to mars so we have rocket type uh let's say is uh spacex uh falcon 9 uh, for example then uh, our destination as a first base we will start uh, with really close we'll start with the moon so we'll get to the moon first and then we will use fuel type it's like I googled that it's RP1 and liquid uh, oxygen is like rocket propeller one uh, propeller one something like that and uh, that's what it actually uses and okay we have rocket to Mars and uh, but we go to the moon so right now I can say my rocket to Mars uh destination equal mars and then if i go and uh, print my rocket to mars i have destinations mars here so that's the an another option to like create this uh <coughs> type of mutability and stuff and um yeah to launch rocket to mars we also need to know coordinates so let's Let's actually use tuples for that. And uh, our coordinates are in um, RA something, uh, I don't know, like the abbrevi uh, abbreviation of that. Don't remember that, but uh, it's also something I Googled. Uh, 
52 the <coughs> degrees 3 min 1 s something that so these are coordinates and um, I have type rocket uh, destination and my rocket destination will have destination name uh, let's say it's a string and I will have constellation uh, string and I will have coordinates so I can uh, and my coordinates basically will be a tuple of string and string looks familiar right it's this one so what I can do now so I have this type and now I want to like define this destination so I will define Mars destination and it will be equal destination name Mars uh, constellation this one and um, yeah let me get back to things yeah uh, cool so um, let's see right now like how uh, records are compiled to JavaScript and let's actually take all this uh, all this example uh, and paste it uh, let's see if it not failed we'll just pa paste it here ah, okay sorry let's run uh, Let's run our index uh, open with live server. Uh, I have some errors here. Uh, Uh, regarding the tuples and what you wrote ch uh, in chat in array, it's, it's not really an array. Uh, it's like different uh, data structure. Um, wait, it's not running. Let's first of all, let's see what's wrong. Uh, I think I need to restart my make function here. As different port or something. Um, just a second. I just want to show how it compiles. cannot apply obviously and uh, just load hello world greetings greetings let's just keep it simple It, it tries like uh, it was throwing error because like something was exported and like because uh, if you check local script file here you will see uh, will head somewhere pervasives here and they are required and we don't have required in the browser I think somewhere Anyway, um, 
let's just uh, keep it simple remove that one right have our destination and let's log our destination so what we get here instead of actually having like this uh, as we expect right in JavaScript we expect we'll get an object with like destination names and stuff like that um, so but you get will structure you have an array of arrays right so that's that's kind of will so the reason why records in uh, that way then um, uh, like because fields are fixed they it's compiled to an array with array index access and it's much faster on the native side um, and basically like on the native it compiles to region of memory where field uh, is just like one field lookup uh, plus one actual access so it makes like uh, in in assembly it's like make uh, makes it like two assembly instructions and um, in terms of like access time is like nanoseconds and that that's because like we want like the most performance out of it um, but if we take it to here uh, let's just load it Does it load for some for some reason? Let me just like try it here really quick. I think because it's okay cool so um let's copy paste whatever we had here and try it here so if you check it like in the coordinates and uh yeah okay i get it like why, why you said like it's an array in javascript it um like if you in reason itself it if it compiles to native is not an array and that structure is different but yeah like the simple compilation is to array and um mars uh, destination is uh something like that so you see like it's an array mars is, is and coordinate so it's array of array and it's like super simple as you can see like the code is is pretty readable so even even if you write reason code compile it and just like write it as like you, you cannot differentiate between hand uh, well probably you can but like but mostly it's like a good handwritten code uh, that is generated let's get back to our top and um, let's talk about recursive record types so let's say we want to create uh, our type rocket destination okay and our rocket destination with uh, uh, type rocket destination and it will be a destination name as a string and it will have constellation as a string and it will have coordinates uh, and for coordinates I want to use another type but I haven't defined that so I will use celestial coordinate um, and this is the type I haven't defined but what I can do I can uh, add here end keyword and say end celestial coordinates and my celestial co coordinates will be uh, 
So it will be also a record because I know like every celestial coordinates will have RA and it will have DSC and RA it will be basically a tuple of string, string and string of like three th strings. Uh, and I will have uh, something like that and it will also be string, string and string. Um, so something like that. So I defined my type. Uh, and now I can use it. Uh, so imagine if if I would have defined this type and then instead of having end, I would have defined type celestial coordinates, it will yell at me. Let's actually see that in, uh, in editor. So if I do something like that, uh, and I will have type, Celestial coordinates, it will yell at me that it's unbound uh, type constructor unless I do something like that. Well, the problem is uh, that I want to define them together, so like I can do that with uh, uh, whatever it was. Uh, this one. So this is like the the thing. Um, cool. So uh, this is for recursive uh, uh, record types. And now let's get to parameterized record types, which is another layer on top of that. So um, the reason why I might do that uh, in like, because you, you have, you may say, okay, but I ha still have this like celestial coordinate type. Yeah, it's unbound because it's only a type, but you can, um, I will have these celestial coordinates uh, and I will have rocket this dis destination. But why I would do that? So I can parameterize things. I can, and uh, if you're familiar with the uh, generics concept in uh, like different languages, it's pretty much uh, similar. So I can have a uh, rocket destination. And for having like parameterized things, I can use special character like this. And I can say my type of rock destination uh, of rocket destination is uh, again destination name. Let's actually type here. It will be easier. Uh, so I have this one here, and I actually don't know if I would want to use a string uh, for my uh, these values. So what I can do, I can say, okay, so this type is also parameterized with the same, uh, sorry, not here, uh, here. Uh, so it's also parameterized here and I need to pass it around. So I have this type, I'm getting it here. I will pass it to this type. So it's getting in here and instead of string, I can use A's as a string. Uh, yeah, uh, the question is what is reason ML? Reason ML is like a syntax uh, on top of um, syntax and toolchain on top of a camel and JavaScript ecosystem, like a quick recap. Uh, when you use like a really uh, great type system and it compiles to either JavaScript or native or bytecode. That's in a nutshell. I hope it answers your question. So um, that that's the idea. And you can write web for that, you can write mobile, you can write native code, you can write whatever was servers in that, like node extensions, whatnot, but basically most of the things uh, you can even like write Lambda functions in ReasonML for having like serverless uh, ReasonML code on uh, AWS or whatever. Uh, anyways, let's get back to our example here. So let's say if I want now, so let me just pass it, uh, paste really quick here in our top. And now if I want to say uh, have a rocket, 
that has destination name uh, Mars and it has constellation constellation this one and coordinates will be RA notice that I don't actually um, say that this is some kind of type or something I just like pass things around so I will just pass a string let's actually pass an int and then I will have like DEC I think that's how it called I called it right yeah and three four five and it will be uh, cool so you see my rocket is of type rocket destination int uh, so it already knows that if I passed here in integers then it's of type int and now like if if I will change it to let's say floats uh, it will know automatically it will infer all the types it will know automatically that it's rocket destination of type float and it's like super cool this type inference okay cool so these uh, this is about tra um, records and uh, we have uh, lots of things to cover we we have like much more things to cover here today um, let's talk now about variants so like we've seen right now like we've seen several data structures we've seen uh, obviously we've seen lead bindings we, see, we saw tuples and we saw records also there is um, a concept called objects uh, and you ca can cast or uh, can access objects like uh, some object something like that but we won't uh, cover it today we'll cover it like later on and um, objects can be confusing uh, especially like on the first day because um, objects and reason are different from objects in JavaScript uh, and uh, when we will talk about buckle script we will understand that buckle script will give you an ability to basically have this connection between JavaScript objects and uh, records and like transferring types and like uh, stuff like that so we will talk I think on, on day uh, on third day or something like that um, yeah let's talk about variants now so variants uh, is another data structure and it, um, it allows us to express uh, um, either something is this or that so let me show you real quick I can say I'll uh, let my uh, actually yeah let's write here variant equal this or that uh, what do I forget ah yeah sorry uh, yeah it's let sorry it's not a let it's a type uh, type my variant is this or that what does it mean uh, it mean it means that I can use this somewhere and it will infer this type as my variant so why it's useful it's like for like lots and lots of things um, and um, little bit about like terminology so um, obviously like the first thing that you can think about it's like using it as uh, enums um, like similar to enums but it can be used for much more than that so like uh, let's say in, in JavaScript you want to have like uh, you have all those uh, checks if this key is equal something or if that is equal something and you, you just 
pass around strings and check if the strings are equal and stuff like that. In terms of like performance is like super bad to do and in terms of like uniqueness you never know if you fail or not. It was something like pass lowercase or something like that. With variance you know if this uh, this is passed it's it's final. It's like this variant. And a um, uh, little bit of, um, about like uh, naming so as you can see, like type my variant uh, is camel case, and the variant itself they start with the uh, uppercase letter, and these are called actually constructors, um, because we can. Um, I, I told you that we can uh, use them as like similar to enums, but we can use them for much more than that. We can like pass values inside variants. So let's create. Uh, let's say type point and our type point I can say okay cool my point is a tuple it has like uh, uh, x of string uh, it has like a tuple of like string and string or whatever or like no it's not logical to be a string we want to do calculations on that so it's like float and float yeah sure you can do that but uh, what if you pass around another tuple in different place and uh, it will infer it as a point, it won't be actually a point. Uh, what we want to achieve, we want to like explicitly say that this point is an actual point, uh, but and we'll have like some uh, fields that you can pass uh, to this type. So I can say that my point is instead of like having something like this point uh, something and it's completely valid syntax but I want to say something else I want to say that I have a point and my point will get a float and a float what does it mean it means that if uh, in order to create this point like if I will do something like this I will get regular top a tuple if uh, I will have floats I will still have a regular tuple but if I want to pass a point I will need to pass a point to point three three point four and I know that it's of type point so it gives me like this explicitness to uh, to use it uh, and let's say uh, let's see actually how it's implemented in in JavaScript uh, as you can see it's not implemented at all unless I say uh, point zero two point three so implementation is super simple right it's just uh, just an array right the cool thing about this all the like uh, implementation details in buckle script that's something that is outputted but all the compilation and, and checking is done on uh, like a camel side right so you get all these benefits of using uh, like tuples or using like variants and, and stuff like that and in the end you get really performant uh, javascript code so okay we'll define the, uh, a point and now we want to define a shape and our shape will have uh, it can be a rectangle and a rectangle will get two points point one point two and uh, it will have also a shape of circle a circle and will be a point in space in 2d space and we'll have a radius <laughs> so we have a shape and that that's that's cool we have now if we want to define a rectangle we can say we have a rectangle that start with a point 2.0 the 3.2 and uh, yeah, one point and the other point is 3.3 and 2.1. 
So we get a rectangle and our rectangle is just shape. So we can use all of those and it's like super, um, um, super cool data structure, especially when you understand all the benefits of it, especially when we get into like pattern matching, how I can extract all those values. Because right now it looks like really a uh, great syntax. I hope you understand that it's a great syntax sugar for like uh, having explicitness with your uh, data structures. But where it shines is in the pattern matching. You can extract any point of, of the, any part of those uh, of, of this shape and get all these points data. You can get like specific X of, of this point and it's, it's done super easily with uh, the structuring in pattern matching. Um, and now let's get into more uh, and fun stuff. And I guess you um, you will have similar example in your exercise for, for uh, today's homework. Um, so we will have a type of uh, shape binary tree. And uh, our bin tr binary tree will be other empty, uh, which is fine, right, to be empty. Or it will have a node in a binary And binary, binary tree basically works in the, in the following way you have like the first one is data, then left side and right side. So the data is shape, the uh, right side is shape binary tree, and the left side is also shape binary tree. And, uh, and that's how you uh, create a binary tree type. So like right now I want to create my binary tree for my shapes I already created. So I want to say, okay, shape binary tree. It's a node. And my first item in the node is rectangle. Like the data for the first level is rectangle with point to uh, uh, 2.052 and like point to 3, uh, 5, 2. And then I will, so I will have, I have this data, then I need the left side and the right side. So the left side will be um, uh, again, it will be a node because I continue down the tree. So I have the node and my node will be circle. Uh, circle will have point and it will have a float. Um, so this is like the, the data and then my binary tree can be empty. So, uh, the, the second level, uh, the left side and the right side is empty. Now the, this was for the left side of the tree, like left branch. And now for the right branch, I can say it's a node with rectangle with point two three four five and uh, yeah another point three four two one um, so I have rectangle and now uh, it will be just empty uh, <laughs> So like what I forgot, I have rectangle with uh, with two points. And then I have empty and empty. Uh, inside here, and I have another empty. I think I I had a mistake somewhere. Yeah, let me just like paste it here. So again, I have node with the rectangle, like uh, the data, right? Then like left side and then, ah, okay, cool. I forgot another level, that's, that's why. 
and then I will have a node with a rectangle of uh, with these points and then I have the left side will be another rectangle and the right side will be empty. If I pass this one, I even have this cool uh, indentation in our top to understand how my tree will look like. So my tree first level has one data and then it branches to two and then one of them is empty and other one has another branch to like to one side and then the right side is empty. So that's how I, I create a tree. Uh, <coughs> 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 Sorry. <coughs> yeah, so another thing that I want to show you is that you can do like parameterized constructor. And the one example that I wanted to show is like creating, uh, let's say, constructors such as this, like I have type of list and it will be either empty or it will head, uh, it will have a head with type A and then it will head list. So the thing is like you have, uh, and it's also like recursive uh, recursive type. So I have empty or head with data and then list and, and it, the list goes on. So uh, when we talk about lists, that's actually like, that's not the complete implementation, but that's actually how lists uh, look like in memory. So they are linked. You have like first value, basically our lists, even though like the syntax sugar is something like that, in memory, they will look like like this: one and then head two and then head three, and the list goes on. So one value points to another one, points to another one, points to another one. That's how lists are represented in memory, um, and we will talk about that when we we'll get uh, to lists. Hopefully today. Uh, one question. Uh, one thing. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I just had to ask uh, something. Um, another thing. Um, that is uh, really important. We have the uh, option type and this type is available everywhere. So we don't have nulls. Uh, uh, um, yeah, so uh, yeah, sorry about that. I had to write something to Tyler. Um, so we have this like uh, type option which is available um, uh, for uh, like for your use. So we don't have now, but we have like none, for example. And you see, it's like an option A or some something. Uh, so sometimes, if you want to uh, say that something is uh, optional, you can say it's. Uh, uh, it's optional basically it's option string so for example I can say uh, uh, my record is uh, has a name which is option string uh, name I think like this one what I'm missing uh yeah sorry it's a type uh it's a, a type record name of option uh option uh string so it means that um uh, when i define something like this 
it won't work because this expression it knows that it has an aim so it has to be this type but it says that this type is option string it means that I indicate that this option uh, this name can be sometimes empty so in order to pass this optional type I need to pass uh, pass it you know this way so the reason to do that is uh, later on if I want to check if it's uh, empty or not I do pattern match and I ask if it's done or if it's some and we will uh, look in a bit about pattern uh, like how pattern matching looks like we already seen lots of things in terms of pattern matching we've seen it in um, uh, like when we talked about the structuring um, but yeah we, we, we've seen that and um, right now we will talk about more uh, like in depth how it looks like so um, up until now any questions I'll just wait a little bit for answer uh, for uh, the chat if somebody has a question. Cool. If all is clear, then let's continue. So okay, we we'll have we have a pattern matching. So patterns are basically it's like a programming mechanism that helps with processing data and um, it serves two purposes we have we can check what structure data has and we can extract parts of data we've already seen how we did, um, um, extracted parts of data in when we use we use the structuring uh, but we can do much more than that so like how it works uh, in a nutshell and uh, I will write a little bit of like pseudo code here so it will fail because it's like pseudo code, pseudo code. but um, basically the idea in uh, pattern matching in reason is like um, to extract the data you need to um, create the same uh, like in the same way as you create data structure in the same way you extract data what does it mean in the structuring you used we use for example uh, our tuple is one two and then to get it we uh, created like a b equal tuple and we got that our a is int and b is int <coughs> and actually really cool to see it in the editor work in the same like even better than in our top uh, right so we have like this a and b and uh, we can evaluate those and it's a multi structuring thing we've seen and just to recap we can extract only a or we can extract nothing uh, we um, easily can do that we can also do that and basically we can extract something as something we can create a sort of an alias we will see in a bit like why it's uh, uh, why it's important to have uh, this type of uh, functionality and uh, we can actually yeah let, let's get into like more uh, like an pseudocode so this is by by the way how you use comments in reason uh, so if we say x and y that they matches uh, and this is not the syntax is a pseudocode, a pseudocode again if they ma uh, matches one and three what does it mean? It means x is 1, y is 3, right? So the data is matched, again, the structure. And because, like, for example, if we would have said something like that, it will fail because data doesn't match the structure. So the data has to match the structure. It's the first type of thing. The, the second thing, data is extracted to the same, uh, to lead bindings that I created like inside the structure. So like if you say access here, meaning in this scope, you will create 
uh, it will create a um, lead binding for uh, for x be equal to one and for y to be equal uh, to three. Um, what you can say th this is one thing. If you say, for example, one y matches one and three. What does it mean? It will check if our structure is the same. Cool, it's the same. Then it will say, okay, my value here is one. It matches this value, does it? Yeah, it matches this value, then it's fine. And then like uh, take three and um, like create lead binding for Y, which will be equal to three. So it's basically like checking data structure, uh, data structures, checking values and creating these lead bindings for uh, for values inside everything inside of like one clause. So this is like the, the pseudocode, right? So uh, in addition to that, if we talk about pseudocode, um, what you can do, you can say uh, you have, for example, one and zero. This is the tuple. And you want to say, if my x, uh, if my x matches, uh, uh, like if my uh, second value matches zero, then my x equal one, right? But you also want to say that if uh, something like that, uh, you can say uh, you want to say if my uh, first va uh, value is zero, then x equals zero. That's what you basically want to say, right? So like what you would have said without pattern matching, you you would check if my first value is uh, what uh, the second value is one then uh, check if my first value is zero uh, or sorry, or if my first value is zero and then you will do all this. So in uh, pattern matching, you can do that one and you can provide an alternative. So you say only in one clause, something like this. And it means if my data structure is like this, my X will be one. If my data structure is like this, my x also will be one. So basically, what it means, it means either one, uh, one zero or oh, one. This one won't work. This one won't work. So like, uh, it's a really neat way to like provide alternatives and and stuff like that. Addition to that, we've seen as so like I want to say that. Uh, uh, let's do, do it without alternative actually. I want to say, for example, if uh, I have eight and X equal um, something, I don't know, two and three uh, matches, matches two and three. It's not a syntax again. If my F X, uh, uh, eight and X and it doesn't match, but like, let's say it's eight. so my x will be th three. But let's say I, in this pattern match uh, clause, I want to uh, actually um, check if uh, also the, the whole tuple. So I can do like as, and uh, I can use it with uh, like as y, and then I can use this y. And my y will be essentially like uh, this tuple, eight and x. Um, so that's that's in a nutshell. We will recap on pattern matching also tomorrow when we'll look at the examples and uh, like at the homework and we'll do it together our homework. Now, but let's let's see the, the actual syntax. Um, so let's say we had the, those coordinates, right? We created those coordinates and uh, I think it's here, Mars destiny. Yeah, we have here coordinates. Right, so we will start with basic pattern matching as uh, destruction. Uh, our coordinates equal Mars co uh, Mars destination. 
let coordinates yeah expression type rocket destination expression yeah because i need to like have mars destination and my mars destination is of type where is it coordinates Ah, I think because it's uh, trying to do it as a, as a rocket destination. No, not that way. Um, I think this one. No, still, I think I'm just mixing here several things because the, the same names and stuff like that. So let's probably check it here and uh, so my Mars destination is rocket destination. Okay, fine. So let's do what whatever we did, uh, let coordinates uh, equal Mars destination. Uh, I still have this rocket destination thing getting in in the way. Uh, it's uh, we we actually have history in our top if I haven't told you previously. So like we have. Um, what was that rocket destination, right? And uh, we had Mars destination at some point. Uh, uh, no, we had somewhere over here uh, a rocket destination and yeah, we had coordinates and then we have this one. Uh, string of type celestial coordinates. Ah, it's still, it's still that one. Okay, anyway, let's do, like for simplicity, let, let's do a different uh, example. Uh, uh, let's something, some record equal uh, test uh, like string and string it says something like this uh, and it's not let it's type uh, type some record test string string cool so let's uh, test to equal test uh, hey hi something like that okay and it's some some record so right now let's destructure get our test out of test two okay cool we got our test but we want actually to get let's say a second element of the tuple so we can uh, use it like the first one with the uh, doesn't matter what's the first one what matters is the second one so we want our uh, greeting uh, binding to be like of the second uh, element of the tuple and we definitely can uh, get that so as you can see, like the data structure, or, like the destructuring and the data structure, and the structure essentially is a pattern matching is uh, the same as uh, as how we defined our data. Um, so uh, so now let's talk about like how we do it in, uh, and this is like for single expression, but we want to do it for uh, several several expressions. Uh, so let's do it here. Um, let's say 
will we want some will have some kind of result so to pattern match you use switch statement and uh, even though it looks like uh, similar to JavaScript switch and stuff like that it's not switch it's like pattern matching and has all the uh, benefits of uh, functional languages pattern matching so we have this result and we can switch on uh, like uh, this is just an assignment of a binding and we can switch on variable or we can even switch on actual values so I switch on uh, one and I will say something like this I say if it matches this data structure I mean if one matches one then the result will be one and I have immediately this warning um, why is that because it says this pattern machine is not exhausted and you will see it all the time like this is uh, sometimes like even like when I do projects in original mail I um, even add to be config a flag to treat all these warnings as errors because what does it warning means it means whenever this is different than one I have a problem because I don't know what is uh, what result is so I would say okay if it's two then I would say two and I will still have the same and then I say three uh, three so basically like I need to provide all the integer range here which is kind of hilarious right you <laughs> wouldn't expect this to, to do that so what you can say you can say okay if you have something else something unknown then use it here and actually using this one is a little bit of uh, like it's kind of escape hatch and sort of anti pattern because um, if you like uh, put this clause it means like everything else uh, it, it can be false at some point so what is advised to do instead of like having everything uh, you provide data structure but with variables so you say if I have some kind of X then I uh, just type unknown x. Uh, yeah, you see, it even doesn't give me an ability to, because uh, it's type an int and expected of type string. So I need to do this one. And uh, cool, it works. And yeah, uh, also another thing with uh, like semicolons, you have to do it in our top. You don't have to do it in editor. So it's like. It's up to you. Um, yeah, because in our top you need this for uh, evaluation. Here you don't. Um, okay, so it's like simple values. But what if I want a tuple? So I can say one and zero. So let's actually take this example. So I have one I had one and three. So if uh, and I already have here an error because pattern match doesn't match the data structure. And it's the first thing so let's say if it's one and three then it's one and it's also doesn't mean uh, match data structure and let's say I did something like that and I did something like that and uh, let's just skip it and it still has a problem. Why is that? Because it's not exhaustive. Here's an example of a value that is not matched and even gives me an example of what is not matched, which is super cool. If you forget something to match here, it will give you an, an error, uh, an uh, like example of what, what is the, the actual problem. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, in addition to that, um, what else do we have so like he, here's a uh, so we we have here like one and three right and x and y so i want to say if it's x and, uh, take y here then uh, i would uh, do let's say one plus three and string of int something like that but I still have this uh, problem because uh, all my match cases are already used here with uh, the X and Y so I don't actually need those so it gives me all this so and and now it's I'm basically almost done I, it still gives me a warning because my variables are unused 
because I do like I I had an error here. I, I wrote like string a string of int one plus three. So imagine if I won't ha uh, had these errors, and here for example I had a variable. Let's actually uh, make it a variable and. Uh, What's my tuple is? It's one and three here. So I have a problem here. Like, um, for example, if I uh, hadn't these warnings, I wrote this type of thing. And at some point in the code, I get one plus two and uh, I still get values one plus, plus three. It will happen definitely, like all these problems can happen in JavaScript, but here it give me a warning and use variable. So I understand that I have to use them, so uh, x plus y, and I'm done here. But it's it's not what I actually wanted to do. Uh, like it's it is like the first thing, but also I want to match one and y. And this is a more specific case. So I want to say if it's one and y, then uh, I want to. Uh, first uh, plus y string of int y. So it will try to match this case. If it doesn't match this case, it will uh, go to this one. So this is like the most generic one. So I keep it in the end. So the other thing I want to match if my uh, like this one with alternatives. So I can say, okay, if I have, what was that, x, 0, and if I have 0 and x, then uh, either uh, either first or second zero um, and uh, like x is uh, x something like that and still I need to do a string of int cool uh, so it's another pattern match I did here and uh, I want to create this one uh, for some something Let's say I want to match if it's eight and x as something like this. And uh, this will work, right? Because like, remember, it's a block. So the last value is uh, returned, but it does make sense. So what I want to do here is uh, I have x right but let's say in it just like uh in, uh, for sake of example but i have this x i can say uh my x is uh basically i have already x here but i want to say uh, uh i want to get this eight but all inside the block so i want to say y equal tuple uh, so I get x and y and now I uh, want to print them something like this uh, I will print that plus uh, y string of int and uh, uh, plus a uh, string of int x uh, let's close it and yeah have it something like this so basically here i have all uh, match cases that I wanted um, different types of match cases that I wanted to uh, uh, like to try out um, yeah so that that's like the the main uh, uh, the main power of pattern matching just a second 
So like additional thing that you can do with petal matching and uh, you can uh, read more about that and we'll use it in like la later, uh, like to tomorrow or in the day after. You can say, for example, when true. So you can have this when clause. So basically when you, uh, you want to do this pattern matching and in addition to pattern matching, you want to do some logic, it can be uh, some function call that gets a predicate or whatever. So let's say you have like let is server error. Uh, uh, let's say it gets some uh, response. Uh, uh, let's say a server response. Uh, equal uh, so like a server error and I'm getting some kind of like a server response Let's when a response can do uh, like or we can define a function or can yeah let's just keep it true equal false uh, and false something like that and so we can use this ma uh, match uh, this this when clause uh, in addition to that we can actually. Uh, so you can raise exceptions, and we'll talk about this later. But you can raise exceptions in uh, in reason, um, and here we uh, we can also pattern match an exception. So we can say if it's exception, and let's say I have uh, error. Um, well, we'll talk about this later. Error has to be exception type, but if it, it's exception of some some sort of uh, exception. Uh, some exception, then uh, just like print something. Uh, so we can do some of this kind of pattern matching. Um, in addition to that, we can um, uh, we can obviously like do all these type of things, and uh, yeah, that's like the main idea of pattern matching. You can read more about that also in docs. There are like a bunch of like tips and tricks and stuff like that. We will get through them like during uh, next days. Um, yeah, but that's uh, that's the main idea of pattern matching. So the one thing that we are left for today. Uh, let me check really quick if it's better to leave it for tomorrow because it's like a um, lot of content for today already. So let me just check if I put it in. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's leave the rest for uh, tomorrow and um, get through. So we had uh, for today also lists and arrays. And uh, because it's like a very complicated topic to get like in depth, so I I will leave it for tomorrow when we will talk also about functions and, and stuff like that, and we will also like it will be kind of recap on pattern matching to because like, uh, to get things from the from the li from lists and arrays it's like where pattern matching also shines. You can uh, get actually like something like that uh, if we have the, uh, an array uh, at least we can get the first one or a tail and uh, or we can say okay if it's an empty list and stuff like that but we'll see it tomorrow we'll talk about pattern machine in race tomorrow so what I want to do now is uh, to get back to the presentation and uh, so like the the concept is you have uh, some homework here and uh, 
I'm not sure if you it will give me to paste this link, but I will try anyways. Uh, so this is the link. Cool. Yeah, it works. So this is a link for the uh, for the exercise. Um, and uh, let's go through through this exercise and uh, we'll see what you're supposed to create. Uh, the idea is you're doing this at home and then you you like tweet me on Twitter with the results and uh, uh, yeah tomorrow we will get through all of these and we'll do it together. Um, also we'll be recap on what we talked about today and we'll get more in depth. Again to like recap on things we will be doing during this course. So we'll start we started today with a uh, like core uh, language syntax. Tomorrow we'll get more in depth with functions, recursions, functional pro programming tips and techniques, modules, functors, uh, uh, polymorphic variants, lots of like more advanced stuff. So it's really uh, uh, that that's why you have like fairly a big amount of exercise for today because it's really important that you. Uh, have all those uh, uh, like play around with all, all the basics of the language, so you will be uh, you will understand like the uh, more advanced concepts. And uh, yeah, tomorrow we will work both in our top, but mostly we will also work in the editor. And um, we will um, yeah. Speaking of our top or editor, if you tweet your results, it can be either gifts. It can be you can actually create this like in here to try and and just like share a link um, so you can do uh, that that's another question uh, another option um, um, it can be uh, like whatever medium you prefer the idea is like to uh, get this done and tweet uh, on, on Twitter so I will know that it's done and uh, yeah let's get through exercises so it's like several sections. Uh, first is like with values and expressions. So the idea is to run all those, uh, to work on those results, like to check this, for example, without running our top, trying to like figure out yourself without trying it anywhere, what the result will be, write down the result, then uh, write it in our top and then uh, get the, the actual result. So for example, if you have this one and you write, okay, your result is uh, 11 because that's that's why. And in our top, that's what you get. So essentially like the, the in ideal way, it's like you get the same uh, result as in our top. If it's not, it's important to clarify what's uh, what the problem was. Um, and uh, yeah, try to do as much as you can. Uh, what, what's really important, if you miss uh, several of those, that's fine, but it's really important like to work on, on those one because uh, these are really, like everything is kind of important here. Uh, so you have like all those things here to just like going through results and uh, writing down what results are and uh, what results are out of. Um, you have several questions such as this one, make the following compile with you using only block scope. Um, um, try to like make a compile, like what's what's the problem here, try to figure out what's the problem. Um, like just taking this and, and compiling why it doesn't work. Um, and then um, like uh, what will be the results of that one, what will be the results of that one. It's like fairly simple uh, exercises. Then we'll get into more advanced stuff. We have like uh, binding scopes and types. You will uh, give an example of global binding shadowing inside anonymous vlog scope. Create alias type on existing types. Um, uh, write what's wrong with that. And then yeah, with the uh, tuples, you have like, I know we haven't um, talked about functions yet. But we will. Uh, I showed you like really simple functions how you write those. So like write a function that takes. Also you have in the first steps. Uh, Gist I've shared previously. You have these like um, dogs link. So you can check also dogs for that. And um, for tuples, you write a function that takes an integer between ten and, and ninety nine. Doesn't need to enforce that. 
you can just like assume that there is an integer between 10 and 99 and uh, it returns an integer which uh, um, like would have flip digits um, whichever you you reach that it's, it's fine um, you need to like take three dimensional vector and multiply them um, uh, like have uh, having like add uh, right add functor, uh, function with like two three dimensional vector also like add them uh, yeah what will be the value of that one how it can be fixed and then in terms of like the the more solid example it's like you, I need you to create a binary tree that uses uses variance and recursive uh, record types um try uh, like come up with like any binary tree that you want uh but i need you to create that and uh, this one is like let's say you have api response from the server and let's say it's a record and it has name last name optional age and optional about me um uh, and twitter handle um no, actually, you know what? I'll need the optional, optional age. Yeah, it can be just name, last name, age, and uh, about me and Twitter handle. Let me just edit this really quick. Uh, we'll simplify a bit. Yeah, so we have these uh, fields and uh, then you need to create a API response variant type which i remind you like if you think about like a response from the server it's like loading error and response and each one of them will have like different constructors like come up with your constructors but imagine uh, like server response if it's an error for example have error state maybe error codes stuff like that so like create this response variant type uh, and then pattern match an API response and return different messages for different network errors. So uh, I want you to check if it's like error like 404 or like 500, uh, stuff like that. So pattern match and, uh, and check what, what's the response. Um, also, <coughs> pattern match and check if response uh, name is in response is yours then you print custom message message of let's say i succeeded with all my exercises or something like that um yeah i hope you find this exercise interesting and um challenging um and um yeah i um i think yeah i uh, i added it here and let me add additional thing here um so I told you that I will have GIST with all uh, snippets. Uh, give me a couple of seconds. Uh, I will share it in a bit. Uh, I think yeah, it's this one. Uh, let's see. Uh, just a second. Meanwhile, if you have questions, just try them down in the chat. Um. Okay, yeah, I got it. <clears throat> Oh. 
Okay, so uh, let me <coughs> just edit it really quick and add this snippets link and uh, uh, so this one is for exercise and I will add additional one for snippets for code snippets uh, it will be this link uh yeah cool so if we go into like this snippets link you will have all those like well, whatever we covered and uh i have different examples that i typed because like i mean i haven't copied from here but like uh, and for for these types of things that i explained you have like explanations so you can like go through these explanations and also read more about that have different like links for camel manual and for like uh, string api and uh, stuff like that um yeah let binding definitions types block scope uh, tuples uh, link to pervasives uh, which is like uh, uh, first and second that we talked about when we talked about tuples uh, record declarations uh, recursive uh, record types parameterized variants recursive variant types and pattern matching that's what we covered today and uh, yeah that's that's the one thing uh, in addition to that uh, we have these first steps that is also in uh, in presentation so it's like uh, with all the links to docs and stuff like that speaking of presentation uh, if you don't have it in email uh, that I pasted pasted it in in chat this is like the link to the slides and uh, yeah thanks uh, hope you liked this day one and it's just the beginning we'll be getting into more in-depth stuff and uh, yeah uh, I will be here on the stream for like next uh, I think 10 minutes something like that so if you have questions um, feel free to ask them I'm monitoring the chat so yeah feel free and uh, good luck with the homework tomorrow <laughs>